It's the Lockdown Flyers podcast for Wednesday, August 2nd, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that's talking a lot about prospects today. Never a bad thing. We've got some news as well as the World Junior Showcase to talk about, plus your mailbag questions all on today's show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on the app formerly known as Twitter at our Miriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are also on Instagram and Threads and Blue Sky at Locked On Flyers. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. You can subscribe or follow us for free over on YouTube. We're on the SiriusXM app. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day how are you doing russ well you know hockey in the summer it's it's good i really haven't had a chance to really dig into it yet but it's on my dvr it's waiting for me excellent so we are going to get into that summer showcase on the next segment but there are a few little dribs and drabs of news around some Flyers prospects that we need to catch up on. I think, you know, one of the more surprising things this summer to happen in hockey is the firing of Todd Woodcroft uh, at Vermont, who'd been with the program for quite some time as the head coach. Alex Bump, uh, one of the top Flyers prospects, uh, had been slated to play there and even practiced with the team over the summer but with the firing uh i think that he had some doubts because woodcroft was the whole reason why he wanted to go to vermont right so he has officially entered the ncaa transfer portal yeah the transfer portal is a tricky place uh i know college football people know it a little better than i do but i've kept on up with it a little bit and what i notice is most times players lose a year most of the time they could go to school but can't play hockey and I don't think that's Bump's thing here, like where he's going to want to just go to school and take a year off of hockey. Now, could there be special dispensation? Sure. Uh, I'm sure they have a, I, I know they have an outlet for that. And I guess he'll plead his case. But let's say they don't um, have a way to get him to a school this year because he has to wait a year. I think he goes back to the USHL then because he's still 19 and, you know, he, he hasn't done all he can do there he uh even said it last year he could have had a better year so i have no problem if he goes back yeah he had spent time uh on the omaha lancers but then got traded to the tri-city storm as well and so you know it's probably up for grabs what team he would go back to just right. given where there might be space for him to play on a roster but it does seem that if if he does not get some sort of special waiver uh, to transfer to another school and who knows if there's like another program that will have a spot for him right immediately as well that's you know to the level that he would like to have and um i do wonder what role the flyers are, are playing in all of this in terms of advice well, they make phone calls they're trying to call buddies you know i'm sure the flyers called western michigan because they call them about everything um <laughs> but, but but again it, it doesn't mean you're going to sway that coach and I mean, we have to be honest, you know, it's not like Bump's a star either. So if he were a star player, you know, if this were Logan Cooley and you had to find a place for Logan Cooley, it'd be a little easier. He'd still have to go through the same process, but it would be easier to get a team to say, yeah, we'll take him right away. This is going to take a little more maneuvering, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, another bit of information that... Um, came to us via a different show that you are on uh, was around Emil Andre. So yeah. tell us what the situation is there. Yeah, Uffe Boden, who um, who works out of Sweden, he, um, he covers the SHL, and he was basically like HV71, um, really likes Andre. And 
probably won't abide by the loan if Andre's going to start the season in the AHL. They're going to want him. So his feeling was, hey, if Andre's playing with the Flyers, go ahead. The loan's fine. If he's playing with the Phantoms, they're probably calling him back. Yeah, I think that's a tough spot for everybody involved because I think the ideal situation is to get it is to get him over to North America well, and get him an in the system. It's still really good to play over there with with men to get better in that league. I can make an argument either way. Yeah, I think just from a call up perspective, like if he's not oh, over sure. here, you you can't give him a shot, you know, in a no. call up situation, and so that's where you'd be missing out. I don't argue that the SHL is is a good development league it is and I, I think he would do well there it's just I think it might be better just for his progress and, and in terms of that possibility to be over in North America but I guess I guess we'll see how all that plays out in I mean, uh, camp is going to be the decider on that one yeah yeah I think so and then uh, the other little tidbit is the continuing saga of Ivan Fedotov. Uh, we keep thinking this thing is over, and then it isn't. Uh, the Flyers have submitted an official appeal to the IIHF, who gets to determine which contract, the Flyers contract or the KHL contract, which one of those is valid going into this season. Because in theory, the Flyers contract should roll over to this season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the KHL is just assuming it's not at this point. And so we still have not gotten a ruling from the IIHF uh, on what will happen. But, man, that, like, you you keep thinking it's over and then it's not. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know why the IIHF is the one that gets to do the ruling. It doesn't make sense to me. I've not had a real clear explanation as to why. Uh I mean, be realistic, though. He's in camp already. He is scheduled to play an August 5th friendly in Minsk. He's on the roster. So I don't think Siska is feeling like they're going to lose this. And if you really look at it, most of the time, the IIHF favors in, 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 in Russia's favor. Now, some will say, well, you know, Russia hasn't been in the World Juniors or anything. Okay, yeah, they finally had to do something like that. But also, they let Russia play, Russian players play under OAR and all kinds of other things over the years. And so, yeah, I do I trust the process? No. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of a crapshoot here, but I do think it, it leans toward him staying in Russia and playing there because yeah, I think- other thing, just physically, right? So let's, yeah. say, let's say he wins, the Flyers win this, and then, you know, Ivan Fedotov goes, oh, okay, I can go be a Flyer. And then he goes to fly out and they're like, no, no, you can't leave. Like, is yeah. that, do you see that being as an impossible? I don't see that being impossible. No, I think it, it's going to be a fight no matter what right. happens in, in the ruling. But also, there are voices sympathetic to Russia in the IIHF that have just yes. been outvoted on in terms of participation in these international tournaments. So it's not like they don't have friends there that could be part of the the people making these decisions it's like you know it's not the the full committee right it's just yeah. a, a, a decision making process that they have so you know i i do think that he will be playing with siska this upcoming year um i having fedotov come over can you imagine adding that to the goaltending mix we I already mean, have three goaltenders <laughs> yeah it's something that clearly the flyers would not be ready for and no. they would have to do something like they just you know and it, and again the buyout window has passed so you can't buy out anybody so like i don't know they'd have to just like try and trade somebody quickly and that that might not be yeah. easy no, it would not at all. And uh, I think the whole thing is kind of funny at this point. But yeah, there, there just isn't space for Fedotov right now, even though I, I would love to have him. Don't get me oh. wrong. He's a talented goaltender, but I just don't know how they make it work. No, and, and honestly, he, he wouldn't be getting NHL time this year, even if he came back. I know everybody's thinking, well, he could be the back. Well, you know, John Torrell is just not going to throw him in there. It's just not going to happen. So he yeah. would have to play a whole year or at least a lot of the year in the AHL. Anyhow, and I just, yeah, I don't I don't see it happening this year. I don't. Well, the Flyers have some prospects playing in the World Junior Summer Showcase, and we are going to talk about 
them coming up next. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets, up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you could spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to a $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. On Friday's show, we will be responding to your votes on our weekly summer poll. And this week's question was on the most pressing pressing issues for the Flyers this upcoming season. There's a link to that post in the show notes. If you haven't voted, go and do that. We'd love to hear what y'all think out there. Russ, uh, the World Junior Summer Showcase, I, I think you know, it's a it's a good tournament just to get some additional experience, uh, but it is interesting in that Team USA splits into two different yeah. squads. So more kids get an opportunity in this sort of thing. So like, what is the the general purpose of this tournament for, for Team USA? For the coaches to get good looks at these players to see who they're going to invite to World Junior Camp. I mean, other than unless they play for an NHL team or they're injured, you know, so this gives them an idea. They they, if they have some chemistry, what they look like, that's all. It's just for them, good for them to get reps. The coach talks to them, he gets a feel for the players, and they start thinking in their head, you know, who are we going to invite um, for the World Juniors down the line? But this helps, this helps, you know, point them in that direction. Yeah. So for Team White of the USA split squad, uh, we have two Flyers prospects, Cutter Gautier and Devin Kaplan. And uh, we did find out that Cutter Gautier chose not to go to development camp because, as we thought, because he was just tired after playing yeah. in Men's Worlds, wanted a little bit more time off. He was going to be playing in this tournament, and just there wasn't enough rest in yeah, between. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I, I'm surprised people are not fine with it online. I've seen, I've seen some... Um, people getting mad about it. And I don't get that. Yeah. If he had not played in worlds, I think there would have been an issue, but he did. I, I, I do not blame him whatsoever. No. Like just give the kid like two weeks off. this. And he has to pay his own My God. Too. Yeah, that is also true. That is also true. So uh, for team white, he's been playing a two C on this particular team with McGarty and Snuggerud. Uh, also getting time on the power play on the half wall, which I think is good for him uh, in terms of the experience and and the the power play structure. He's got two goals in two games played. And uh, the, the squad, it's very weird, this tournament, in terms of the split squad and the game scores. Uh, this team lost to Finland 4-2, to two, but then won against Sweden 10-1. to one. So if it yeah. says anything, and, you know, like I said, I haven't had a chance to really look at them. I don't study these like I study the world juniors because I do know the players and have an idea of what their tendencies are. But you do want to just see how they look together and how they look now. If there's some differences. Uh, the thing for Goche is uh, it's fine that he's two C. I I don't think he's going to be the one C on this team. I don't. Um, when in December, uh, you know, there's that guy Will Smith who I think is going to probably have the inside track. If Logan Cooley were playing, he'd be the one. So, right. you know, if he's 2C, that's fine. If he ends up being 3C, you know, then you, you have to start thinking about um, what's he going to be long term. So that's that's going to be the big decision here down the line is, is he really developing as a center outside of, you know, the college ranks? And this is when we'll find out in December. Yeah. Uh, so far in this tournament, uh, if, if you look at some of the commentary on who's standing out, a lot of people have suggested that maybe he's playing a little frustrated in this tournament so far. He's been taking some penalties, but has also shown his bread and butter skill that he that he has, um, you know, taking a lot of shots, creating chances. Uh, and then did score a couple of, of really good goals in the second game for this team. But 
uh, yeah, I think that he, he just has like a lot of growth to do, let's say. Yeah, the the bread and butter part is great, right? Because we know he could score. Those other things that you have to do as a center, that's what you're talking about. And that's where, yeah, yeah that's where he's not there yet. And that's where you have to see in a tournament like this, is he really going to be able to do that? Because, again, you're going to go up against Canada and their 2C is going to be somebody really, really good. Chances are he might be better than you. And so that's something where, you know, you're going to have to really look at that. Yeah, and Canada's not in this tournament. No, no, so, not, not in the summer, but they'll be in the winter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just pointing that out, though, for the competition level. Um, yeah. It's uh, Sweden and, and Finland are, are the other teams besides the two uh, American split squad teams. Uh, Devin Kaplan is also on this roster. He was playing third line right wing, which sounds about right in this sort of tournament for him. Um you know, he doesn't have any points in the two games played and hasn't gotten special team look. But, you know, just the fact that he's there gaining this experience mm-hmm. and, and getting the ice time and being around the program, I think, is is really to his advantage. Yeah. And looking at the guys that are on that team, he's going to be hard pressed to play anything but fourth line if he makes it. And, and that's the thing. So he kind of really needs to stand out here if he's going to make the team. It's all going to be positive for him, even if he doesn't. But, you know, he these are all guys that, you know, he's used to playing with and he's going to have to, you know, raise his game. Yeah, I think so. A team blue for Team USA. Cole Knubel is on that squad and uh, they've had a little bit rough going on on that squad. And uh, I do think, though, for Cole Knubel, this is great for him. And he's stood out a little bit in his play. I would say more than Devin Kaplan. Uh, according to some of the reports, and he's even getting power play time. He's in the bumper spot, mm-hmm. which again is is suited to his skill, I think. And so to get special teams time in a tournament like this, just getting more eyes on him is, is really good. It is. I mean, he had a good year for growth, meaning uh, strength, more speed, better shot. Uh, got passed over in his draft year. I thought he could get drafted that year. I was surprised. So you know now. He's got to be, if he's going to make the team, He's he's got to be one of the leaders because he'll be one of the older players, you know. So this is something where I think he is sort of grabbing um, that ring and, you know, and has raised his game somewhat. And that, that bodes well for him. That'll get him in camp. It still won't get him a guaranteed spot on the team, though. Right. I did think it was uh, prescient that Chris Peters, who we know and love and have have had on the show uh, in his notes about one of the games, uh, used the phrase hard to play against on his shifts in relation to Cole Knubel. We know that John Tortorella loves that. And so the Flyers have to be excited to hear those sorts of reports, right? Yeah. When I, a couple of years ago, when I spoke to Mike about him, you know, he, he said that Cole is like a hungry player, you know, he's hungry for that stuff. Uh, hungry for those hard plays and and he is and then that's something where you know that's some built-in work ethic that really um, helps him yeah and I think as long as he stays noticeable in these games and works hard the way he has been I think he'll at least be under consideration to make the team yeah no question he'll definitely he'll be in that mix now again he might get invited into camp and a week later, he might get ejected from camp. You know, like that's how it works right before right. the World Junior. So, you know, but, he, you know, at this point, I feel like he's got a chance to be invited and that's good. Yeah, I think, like I said, any visibility in this program is good for yes. Flyers prospects and especially a borderline kind of guy like Cole Knubel here. Uh, the next set of games in the tournament starts today and the blue team is playing the white team. So all of these guys will be up against each other at 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, unfortunately, this tournament is on USA Hockey TV, which is like $15 for a single game, which is bonkers. Uh, just why they do not make it more accessible. Like, I bet if they charge like 3 to $5 for yeah, they would get a game, a lot. they would get so yeah. many more people tuning in. I have other ways to watch, so I definitely will. Um, so, yeah, lucky. Uh, I, I'm lucky that way. Yeah. So, unfortunately for the rest of us, uh, it, it's a tough sell 
but uh, we, we will keep track of these guys as this tournament continues and uh, get back to y'all probably on Friday, maybe Monday, uh, depending on uh, the scheduling. In the meantime, we have your mailbag questions to answer, and we will do that coming up next. So before we dig into these questions, Russ, uh, we had an amazing show on Monday where we talked to the guys from Locked On Red Wings about the rebuild there and everything. And we had just casually mentioned that there wasn't a name for the Flyers rebuild because there's the Iser plan in Detroit. Right. And uh, Dan Strymer, apologies if I'm pronouncing that name incorrectly in our comments, uh, had the correct answer. It's the Briera, <laughs> which... I love that. That's like perfect. That. So A plus kudos to you for that. Uh, all credit in the world. Uh, we also had another really great question from Tim, who is at five for fighting fire uh, on the ex a potential expansion draft. And we love this question so much. We're going to do a whole segment on it on the Friday show. So stay tuned for that. Very excited. It's a fun conversation to have. Uh, yes. And we will do that then for this mailbag. Uh, Ryan has a question about uh, the draft. Should the Flyers draft a center or go after a free agent or trade for a center to play alongside Mitchkoff and Gautier? All right. So first off, you have to say, let's say Mitchkoff is there in three years. Well, drafting a center, unless they're drafting, you know, top five, chances are that center is not going to be ready. So most likely they're going to have to trade for that center when the team feels like they're going to contend and, and have a veteran there. There's a chance Cutter Goche could be that guy. But again, I think when the rubber meets the road, it's going to see if John Tortorella is still there, at least in his first season, I think it's going to be very hard for Cutter Goche to be able to play center. Yeah, and obviously we don't have a contract yet for Morgan Frost, but I do think Morgan Frost would complement these guys well at he center. Would. I don't think though that if you're going to be a true playoff team, that he would be a one C with Meech I think that's the problem. Oh, correct. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. We'll just have to see where Couturier is in all of this. Yes. And like, that's a factor, but yes. yeah, my guess is that it's going to have to be somewhere external or some amazing lottery luck. I think. Yeah. For this one. Um, Nina wants to know what's your over under on the number of flyers that will be traded during the season for assets. I'm hoping for at least five players to be moved. We could use more picks for this draft and in the future. Well, uh, you know, a lot of different things have to happen. I, you know, I'm going to say three or four. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. I would, I would say if the betting line is three, I don't know that I want to bet the over there. Like that would be tough. If it's four, then I'm betting the under. Yeah. I think it would be three. I think that's but I think th I think three or four is spot on between trade deadline and the off season. I don't know that they'll trade like three or four guys at trade deadline. Right. No, that's fair too. All right. Brandon wants to know, uh, assuming everything goes as planned, Couture is back to uh, able to play Frost and Kate take steps at center. Uh, and then you have Paling solidified on the fourth line. Who is the odd man out when Cutter makes the jump again, assuming that Cutter plays center here. I feel like the only guarantee is Paling on the fourth because you wouldn't want the other three in that role on the fourth line. Well, no, that's not true. I mean, honestly, if Noah Kate stays as an NHL center, I mean, he's, he can play the fourth line. He's probably going to be the third or fourth line anyhow. Uh, Paling's the odd man out if Gauthier is ready at center simply because he's got a one-year deal. So, you know, he'd be the odd man out. Yeah, I think so too. And I think, you know, Paling can play the wing as well. Yeah. So I, I don't. I don't think that part of it is going to be a problem. I think the other question we talked about is the, the one C. That's the bigger oh, yeah. issue, right? Yeah, that's going to be the big, big issue. Yeah. All right, next question. Steve wants to know, in the flyer system, what position is strongest for their non-NHL players? So I'm going to go right wing because that's where I think Cutter Goche is going to end up. 
That's where Matvey Michkov is going to end up. And doesn't matter after that. Like that's that already makes it the strongest for for their whole system to me. Yeah, I know. I feel like we need some more guys that can play on the left side or can well, rotate can wherever. Side. He can. He's played left wing. I don't know where exactly where he'll end up on the wing, to be honest. Yeah, we shall see. But I think you're right there. I think it is interesting because I wouldn't say forwards overall. Like if you're saying forwards versus defensemen overall, then I might say defensemen is stronger. But if you're just siloing it on the right side, the right side is probably stronger. Yeah, I think so. All right. Uh, last question here. Uh, Black Rocks 8413. I was commenting on our episode, our crossover episode with the Red Wings guys and uh, posted five years to not make the playoffs. No, thanks. And I think that the Flyers are in a different, slightly different boat than the Red Wings here. So I want to kind of respond to that comment in that way, because as we talked about in that episode with the guys that first off, the, the Red Wings have had pretty terrible lottery luck which which we mentioned on that show and that kind of has affected the timeline here yeah and the other major thing which we also talked about with them was the prospect pool when steve eiserman took over was nothing absolutely nothing whereas i think the flyers prospect pool i'm not going to say it was like a top five prospect pool in the nhl was not that but there was at least some like pretty solid pieces to start off with here yeah but again I'm Not much everything. better off than the Red Wings situation. They're better off? I don't know if they're much better off. They I were. Would... The Flyers now, starting this rebuild now, are in a better position prospect-wise than the Red Wings were when Steve Eiserman took over. Sure, but it's, again, not everything goes as planned. You can't account for injuries. You can't account for guys not developing. You can't account for, let's say, Sean Couturier's health. All these things are going to matter. And every time something happens, it could be pushing that back another year. So can I tell you definitively it won't be five years? No. No, I can't tell you that. Because, again, just look around the league. There's teams, look, look how long the Sabres haven't made the playoffs in. You don't think they, you know, three years ago were bullish thinking, yeah, we're finally over the hump. And they're not. So I can't tell you that it's not going to be five years. Sorry. Yeah, well, that part of it is absolutely true. I'm just saying the teams are, are very different in, okay. in terms of That's where fair. the starting off point is. Um, so I don't think you can make the same assumptions overall to begin with. But again, you're right. I mean, anything can happen. Some people like the Chicago Blackhawks lucking into Connor Bedard. Yeah. Uh, you know, that changes the timeline for them, ostensibly, assuming he is everything and, and doesn't have any injury issues, right? All right, that will do it for today's show. Again, uh, we'll have a link to our weekly summer poll in the show notes. So vote if you haven't already. We'll be back on Friday with those results, as well as that really fun conversation we're going to have on a, uh, an, a fictional expansion draft. But what would we do with the Flyers roster this year? As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. So if you've got mailbag questions you want us to answer, you can tweet us at Lockdown Flyers, email us at LockdownFlyers at Gmail, or comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Cats having a rough day. So uh, y'all have a good one out there as well.